number 70. A microphone receiving a pure sound tone feeds an oscilloscope producing a wave on its screen. If the sound intensity is originally 2 times 10 to the minus 5 watts per meter squared, but is turned up until the amplitude increases by 30%, what is the new intensity? All right, so basically we have to relate intensity to amplitude. We did this in one of the prior problems. Uh, I don't remember which one, but I'm going to do this. Uh, I'll, I'll go through it again here. So the intensity here is going to be equal to the power divided by the area. So the key is, okay, great, I have intensity, but how do I relate intensity basically to amplitude? Where does the amplitude show up you know, in this formula? Well, two things. First, you have to know that the amplitude is basically the displacement from equilibrium, or aka the x value. All right, so basically where you have x, all right, you're going to, you're dealing with an amplitude. Now, what I can do with power is I can realize, right, that power is essentially going to be energy per time, right? I mean, that is one of the, that is the definition of power, all right? That we can reorganize that in other ways too, uh, but this would be the most appropriate uh, way to view power for this problem. So the, uh, what I can do now is I can basically just substitute now, instead of power, I can write energy per time. And it would be energy divided by time and then multiplied by the area on the bottom, right? Because I can't get rid of the area. Here's the energy per time. Now I start thinking to myself, okay, great. So I got some more units in here. Can I figure out now how the, essentially the stretch, the amount of stretch of the amplitude is related to either energy or time? And that's where the light bulb should go off. Right, that if we look over here on the right hand side, we realize that the potential energy that's inherent in a, I know it's talking about elastic potential energy, right, but essentially it's all, this is just energy of, 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 a, of a particular wave, all right? So what we can do is we can basically just call that energy in general, that's basically equal to one half multiplied by that force constant multiplied by the uh, displacement from equilibrium squared. Now this essentially, this x is the amplitude, all right? Now what we can do is this. Now we can basically substitute this term, one half kx squared, into the energy in my uh, intensity equation. So this is just one half k times x squared all over time times the area. Now here's the thing, right? I can call, I can give these air, these intensities and these amplitudes names now. I can say that this is the uh, intensity, the I'll, I'll say the larger intensity, and that would then be correlated with the larger um, amplitude. I can create another formula then, right? And I can create this. I can say that the intensity, the smaller intensity, right, would be equal to one half times the K times then the smaller uh, amplitude squared divided by time multiplied by the area. Now what I can do is basically take the fraction or the, relay, or the ratio between these two, right? Divide this. And now this just becomes a little messy, but notice this all will cancel. And now I'm left with the simple ratio, right? I'm left with this, that the large intensity divided by the small intensity will be equal to the large amplitude squared divided by the small amplitude squared, okay? So now what I need, what am I, what are we trying to find, right? What is, we're, we're trying to find the new uh, intensity, uh, right? And the new intensity, excuse me, should be the larger one. Be why? Because we know that these are directly related, that the intensity and the amplitude are directly related to one another. So if the amplitude goes up by some percent, then the intensity will also go up by a, a certain amount. Okay? So we now need to create a relationship between these, all right? So let's just say, let's pretend now, I know it's confusing when you deal with percents. That's why you want to think of a simple example. Let's say an item originally costs $100. And I'm going to tell you, well, the store is going to charge you 30% more. What are you going to pay? You might say, well, okay, right, I would pay $130, right? That would be correct. Now, how do you come up, how did you, you can do this in your head. Now, the struggle is going to be to create a math expression out of it. It's interesting because you do it in your head, but sometimes getting it out in a formula is tough, okay? But it's a good habit to get into. So if this was my old price, right, or I could call this my, the smaller price, and this was the larger price, I got to create a, a formula that relates these two together based upon the percentage change. And basically, I can create this. I can say that the larger price, the larger price should be equal to the smaller price multiplied by one plus that percent change, or 30%, right? When you calculate it, you need it in terms of the decimal. So notice here, you would have this formula, 1.3. Right? If you plug in now 100 in for the small price and you multiply that by 1.3, what do you get? You get 130. So here's a nice little formula that relates 
the large price and the small price. Okay, how in this problem, it's the same thing. Instead of price, though, it's just amplitude. So we can say that the larger amplitude will equal the smaller amplitude multiplied by 1.3. Now, this is helpful because now we can begin to substitute some stuff on into the equation. So watch. So now I have my larger amplitude, excuse me, my larger intensity divided by my smaller intensity will be equal to now. I have this equation solved for x sub l already. So why don't we plug in x sub s times 1.3 in for x sub l in the equation. So this becomes the smaller uh, amplitude times 1.3, that whole thing squared, all then divided by the small intensity squared. Now you know mathematically this just cancels, right? The small the amplitude small squared, and this is essentially squared too because you basically distribute that uh, square. So now what we have is we are now going to have the large intensity divided by the small intensity is basically equal to 1.3 squared. And now I want to find the larger intensity. How did I know that? Right, for the reasons I discussed before. If the amplitudes increase, then the intensities increase. So let's solve this bad boy now for I sub L or the large intensity. That's simply going to be equal to the small intensity multiplied by 1.3 squared. Now notice this is basically the same thing as this. However, it's not exactly the same thing because this is squared. All right, that's because there is a squared relationship between the intensity and the amplitude. But now all you have to do is simply just plug this on in. So the small intensity was as they gave us, uh, they gave it to us 2.00 times 10 to the minus fifth. And then that's going to be multiplied now by 1.3 squared. And just do that in the calculator. So this is 2 times 10 to the minus fifth multiplied by 1.3 squared. And we get about 3.38 times 10 to the minus five, right? So I'll write it on the upper left. So this is going to be the large intensity. And as we, uh, as we thought it should be, it should be larger here, right? I mean, the number is larger. 3.38 uh, times 10 to the minus fifth, and again, that's watts per meter squared. Voila. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye.